Yo, what is up everybody, and welcome back to another Madden 20 online CFM game. We are now in week 13 of the 2021 season, here in the Premier Madden League, and the storylines are not hard to write for this week's game with the Dolphins going against the Texans. Number one, when Jay Dixon is back from injury, the rookie running back returns to the lineup and we will see how he and Boston Scott coexist in the Miami backfield. Number two, the records. The Dolphins are still undefeated, 11-0. Can they stay undefeated against a Texans team who, if they win this game, get a 500 record and have a legitimate chance at winning the AFC South Division? And most importantly, and most prominently, this will be the return of DeAndre Hopkins in the city of Houston to play against the only team he had played for in his professional career until last season's blockbuster offseason trade that sent C.D. Lamb, Minka Fitzpatrick, and a first-round pick that ended up being cornerback J.C. Horn to Houston in exchange for Hopkins playing for our Miami Dolphins. And of course, we are playing against Minka Fitzpatrick, the superstar strong safety that we had groomed for the last two seasons. Hopefully Minka does not wreck our game plan the way he wrecked game plans for us against opponents as we are underway 5-6 Houston hosting the undefeated 11-0 Miami Dolphins. Deshaun Watson and the offense take the field first. Of course, we have to contain Watson, one of the most talented quarterbacks in the game with one of the most prolific offenses in the league with wide receivers like CeeDee Lamb and Will Fuller, but that time they get stuffed trying to run the ball on third down. Jabril Cox outside getting the tackle for loss and forcing the three and out. Of course, Jabril Cox was just a rotational piece on our defense to start the season. The rookie outside linebacker, all of a sudden now he's one of the many superstars on our team that all of a sudden went from having one superstar to start the CFM to now having, I believe, 12 with Lin J. Dixon back in the fold. Here is Lin J. getting the carry, trying to get the first down just a bit short. It looks like we're passing here on third down and one with Khalil Tate, who has definitely been in his bag and mainly because of the production of DeAndre Hopkins and Jakeem Grant. Jakeem especially has had a bit of a revival in our offense, especially with the jet sweeps as Scott trying to find a lane, can't do too much. It's third down and three. It is Khalil Tate looking to pass. Clean pocket is anything open. Throwing at the last second. And that is going to be a catch in bounds by Hopkins, who was already off to a great start. Goal to go situation for the Dolphins. And there is Minka stuffing Boston Scott for a loss. Third down and goal. Five wide. It's Tate. Watch out. Here comes JJ Watt. Up the middle. Even though we are in the year 2021, as that field goal just hooks in, JJ Watt is still one of the best defensive players in the league. As we kick it off back to the Texans, they will take over at the 25 yard line, and we will see if Deshaun Watson can get the passing attack going. Because so far, the Texans have only ran the ball with Duke Johnson and have gone nowhere. Now, here's Watson's first attempt, and that is going to be incomplete, intended for Will for its third down and long for Watson in the offense. Only three on a route that should give Watson the time, but he makes an inaccurate throw intended for QT. It was open, but Watson off the mark and another three and out forced by this Miami Dolphins defense. Especially to close this season out, we have a pretty tough schedule, so we really want to take advantage of winning the games that we quote-unquote should be winning, like this week against the Texans, because we play against the Bills next week. We also play against the Chargers and the Colts to close the season now. As we go downfield, it's Hopkins again. Again, making a catch in this first quarter. So if we can win the games that we should win, hopefully that can help us clinch a playoff berth. And more than that, as whole oh, Boston Scott able to avoid disaster right there and losing the ball, but a teammate falls on top of it. Tate going back to DeAndre Hopkins, who continues to torch his former teammates. They just don't have an answer for him as Scott trying to find anywhere to go. Not out to a good start as Boston Scott. Now it's five wide on second down and eight. Looking for Hopkins. The pass is late and intercepted by J.C. Horn, the man who the Texans drafted using the Dolphins' first round draft pick as Deshaun Watson finally getting something positive going as that is barely not going to be a sack. He just got the ball out for the incompletion. Third down, running the ball again and going nowhere on third down and two. It's Duke Johnson. This conservative approach by the Texans is absolutely backfiring right now and no, 
for what it's worth, we are kind of keeping the Texans in this game by getting off to a bit of a slow start despite how well we've been passing the ball. We got held to a field goal on our first possession, turned it over on the second possession. As here comes Jakeem Grant on the sweep again, trying to get away. One man to beat. He cannot get by Reed, but nonetheless, a great effort from Jakeem. Already 150 passing yards for Tate. Looking for more. He has space, but he's still looking downfield. That's Boston Scott and Tate put Puts it on the money. That was Minka Fitzpatrick that got burnt one on one against the running back, Boston Scott. Remember, from our time having Minka Fitzpatrick on the Dolphins, Minka has universal coverage as a superstar ability, which means he is dominant in both zone and man coverage. So you wouldn't expect Minka to get beat by Boston Scott, but it was a broken play. Scott was able to improvise, go upfield, and we were able to locate him, get the touchdown, get ourselves a 10-0 lead midway in this second quarter. Downfield, that's Fuller, who's not gonna get it. Instead, it's Xavier Howard, who finally gets on the board. His first interception of the 2021 season as we run a bit of triple option right there. This should be an interesting way to try to get both of our top running backs involved in whether it's the running game or the passing game. Potentially at the same time, put them both on the field, split the backfield, and, you know, see what happens. Try to make the defense panic as Lin Jay definitely getting a couple of touches in this game, trying to get his feet under him second down. This will be Boston Scott, who nearly bursted free. The hole was opening, but the last line of defense able to hold up as that will thankfully not be intercepted. Only the second incompletion of Tate's day, but... Both of those incompletions were nearly both interceptions. Third down and three. Once again, five wide attack for the Dolphins, letting the Texans know they want to pass this ball. Can the Texans stop them? Not quite. Jakeem Grant to the 13-yard line. Boston Scott outside with space. Scott looks like he got the first down and almost the touchdown. Clock winding down as Tate. That's going to be an incomplete pass. Man, did that look scary. Second down. Scott juking Fitzpatrick to the ground and in the end zone. The new generation of Dolphins trying to take down the old generation. Not really old generation though because Minka Fitzpatrick, young PC, D. Lamb, second year player. These were all young guys that we traded to get DeAndre Hopkins in a win now move and we're winning now so <laughs> it's working out well for us but you know you can definitely see the potential of what Minka's doing out here. CeeDee Lamb hasn't exactly gotten involved so far but that's mainly because Deshaun Watson hasn't really gotten involved. Only 18 passing yards and Watson losing the ball here that looks like it's gonna be a fumble and play stands. Fumble lost by Watson and right back to the 24 yard line. It is the Dolphins already up 17-0 looking to get more points on this gifted opportunity as Tate rolling. Not much pressure being generated if it's not from J.J. Watt. That'll be kind Counted as a coverage sack by Justin Reed more than anything else. Third down and 18, 23 seconds left. Here's Tate taking a shot, and that is caught! Colin Johnson! Oh my! Shades of Season 2! Johnson absolutely mossing a man! Colin Johnson, Mr. Where in the world is he in this offense? Like, does Colin Johnson even play for us? Yes, he does. Colin Johnson is still capable of making plays like that. With Jaheim Grant and DeAndre Hopkins having prominent roles on this team along with Boston Scott, Colin Johnson has definitely been lost in the shuffle. And every once in a while, we got to give Colin Johnson a chance one-on-one. -on -one. So that's what we did right there. Third down and long. I figured why not as that is going to be incomplete. I thought it looked like the Texans thought that was caught right there. They called a timeout thinking they could get a quick field goal out. Instead, it will be a punt out of bounds to end the first half. A dominant showing by both sides of the ball. Offense was moving the ball well, passing it with ease. Defense, I don't think has even given up a first down yet. So we're definitely taking care of business, which is what we came into this game to do, right? Because, you know, if you play against tough competition like the Bills, the Chargers, the Colts to end this season, even the Patriots last week, we might drop one of those games, right? Because, you know, as much as I love to go 16-0, the main focus is winning the Super Bowl, and that doesn't involve going 16-0. That just involves going, you know, hopefully for us, 3-0 in the postseason if we can get a first-round bye. So that means we definitely have to take care of the Texans this week and in a couple of weeks, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who we also play. That would, you know, more than likely help us secure a first-round bye no matter what happens the rest of the season. And if we can continue to win games as Tate, oh, he had Hawkins downfield, but the Blitz gets in from Cunningham beforehand if we can win these next couple of games that'll buy us the time to rest starters 
down the stretch. Make sure everybody's healthy for the postseason run. That is the dream scenario. We clinch a first round bye in a couple of weeks and we're able to rest our guys. Like Jakeem Grant, who is definitely getting a heavy workload in these past couple of weeks as we continue to rack off wins and rack up passing yards. Remember last week, Khalil Tate had over 400 yards passing and Tate is on his way. And the only thing that's going to stop our offense from getting more passing yards is the score. Because once this game is a blowout, we're kind of mandated to just run the clock out, run this game out, do not run up the score. For now, though, third down and eight, we're going to try to pass, get one more first down here. Maybe a touchdown going underneath Jakeem Grant. Can he turn off field and move the chains? That was close, but it's fourth down and inches. Any other scenario besides the score that we have right now, I go for that one. Oh, that's going to be a shank by Joey Sly. Oh, my. That is a big-time shank. Someone in the fans or someone in the stands probably caught that ball. So, yeah, as we get the interception here with Bobby McCain. Also, Bobby McCain's first interception of the season. So, everybody's getting on the board. I suppose they said, oh, the Texans are on the schedule. Let's see if we can get an interception here. We're giving Caden Stearns a bit of a break this week. Caden Stearns has not had many impact plays, partially because we haven't needed Caden Stearns to have many impact plays. So... Yeah, um, you know, back to the thing, four down inches. I go for that, but, you know, the score, given what it is, you know, we'll just kick our field goal here. Like, I don't know if it's right to go for it there, if it's, you know, considered unsportsmanlike to go for it there up 24-0. So I just didn't, you know, let's just chill out, I suppose. Like, the way we're playing, we're more than likely going to win. The last thing we want to do is, one, piss off someone, and two, get someone injured like Boston Scott, who is now on the ground. Lin J in the game, and Lin J slicing in for a touchdown. But, oh, Bruce Sternum for Boston Scott. Major sigh of relief because the last thing we want to do is lose someone in the game, especially someone as important to our team as Boston Scott. Uh, the, the ideal situation is to have both running backs healthy going into the playoffs, but especially when running backs get injured in this CFM, it seems like, you know, dating back to season one when Kenny and Drake could barely stay on the field for a full game, running backs are the you know, most volatile position as far as players getting hurt, which kind of lines up in real life. Running backs play a pretty brutal position as Lynn J. Dixon continuing to get carries. Arguably, we should be bringing in uh, Rakeem Boyd and Kalen Bullock, but I really want to get Lynn J. some reps out here. And why not get Lynn J. in the end zone again? Yeah, we're kind of limited to only running the ball. That doesn't mean we can't run in for touchdowns if it's there, which Lynn J. does for the second time in this third quarter. And remember, Lynn J. Dixon, he has the jukebox. He has human joysticks. So he has abilities to be great. We obviously saw that against the Cleveland Browns earlier this season. So, you know, finding ways to get him and Boston Scott both involved in the game. You know, always having one of those two on the field or maybe both of them on the field at the same time is something that we have to figure out to close this season out. And that's the way we have to play to close this season out. If we're going to rack up wins like this, you know, we could use this back end of the regular season to kind of experiment and learn things about our team and try things that we probably wouldn't try in a legitimately closed game offensively and defensively, whether it's defensive schemes or new plays, new formations, new personnel settings as Brashad Perriman outside getting some great field position for us that we didn't exactly need but we will take in this fourth quarter so yeah just learning things about our team right now it's just learning what Lin J Dixon can bring to the table even if it is at risk of injuring Lin J we will mix up some Kalen Bullock Boston Scott definitely not coming back in this game man for one he's not available and for two even if he was I would not let him see the field Boston Scott is in bubble wrap right now so thankfully Bruce Cernum should probably not even hold Scott out for next week's game against the Buffalo Bills because we definitely do need to make sure we win that game that is our last major hurdle as far as trying to secure the AFC East division for us because even though we have this fantastic record the Bills and the Patriots still are putting together fantastic seasons so nothing is secure for us and you know if we do lose out the rest of the way you know I, I can't say that because we are going to win this game against the Texans. If we do lose out the rest of the way, there is a good chance we still make playoffs, right? So we don't have to sweat that. So really more anything else, we want to get the division win and a first round bye. So that's on our mind right now as we are up 44-0 against the Houston Texans as Lynn J. Dixon running the ball. So one thing I want to, you know, address to you guys really quick, you know, as you guys always leave comment sections, always leave suggestions. And one of them is 
trying to run with Khalil Tate more and doing more read option kind of stuff. And the reason why we don't do many read options here with the Dolphins, one, um, I'm not a big fan of the read option plays. I feel like we can run better plays, whether that's smart or dumb. That's what I think. <laughs> you know, clearly we haven't always been the best team offensively. So what I think might actually be wrong. So one, you know, I'm not too big of a fan of the read options, but I will try to implement them more throughout the rest of this regular season. And two, why we don't scramble is, well, you see Deshaun Watson scrambling, right? And you see why Deshaun Watson is able to scramble? Because he has escape artists. Khalil Tate does not have escape artists. And even though I'm not the best at taking off of Khalil Tate, when I mean, we do have open space, you know, a quarterback without escape artists, whether he has 85 speed like Khalil Tate or, you know, 55 speed like Tom Brady, they almost run at the same speed. So it's kind of hard to take off, especially when you're in the pocket and you try to step up in the pocket. More often than not, one of those defensive linemen will bring you down. So... You know, I just feel like we have a better chance at getting a productive play. You know, instead of risking getting tackled, we actually keep our eyes downfield and throw the ball. And, you know, like I said, I'll try to work on running the ball more with Kuil Tate and try to scramble more with him. But at the same time, you know, in a game like this, we haven't really needed to. And more often than not, when we had time in the pocket, we were able to look downfield and make a throw. So that is ultimately the goal for us. So, you know, getting the throw will get us more yards, I suppose. So, you know, like I said, I'll try to see. Like, maybe that third down three when we threw it downfield on the run to DeAndre Hopkins. Maybe we could have gotten the first down, but I'm just not that confident in us scrambling without having that escape artist so for right or wrong that's just my mentality that's when to let you guys know what i think when i play the game because you know clearly you know, <laughs> everybody and their mothers think that we should be running for like 100 yards with Khalil tate as uh ryan fitzpatrick's in the game that's when you know gg's in the chat so I'm, I'm always open to suggestions from you guys by the way i definitely use what some of you guys say in the comment section like the fact that we brought boston scott back as the premier running back i love you guys' suggestions in the comments and you know i love using some of them right like it's it's nice to have people looking out for you and giving you ideas because the last thing we want to do is get stale with this Dolphins team and be content. And, you know, when we get content, then everybody else is improving around us and we're staying the same pace. Then eventually they're going to catch up to us and beat us. So, you know, it's kind of hard to do in games like this is to find ways to improve and find ways to not stay content because in a game like this, we kind of win without really doing much. Yeah, we, we definitely put some effort in passing the ball, but like defensively, we kind of just sleepwalked through that game and held the Texans to like one first down. So, you know, trying to always stay fresh is not easy with the way we're playing this season, but that's not a bad problem to have by any means. So the undefeated st season stays alive. It's not a main concern or a main goal for me to go 16-0, but at this point, we got to go for it. If the wins are there, the wins are there. We got to try to get this 16-0. So we're only four games away, and we'll see if we can beat the Bills next week to go to 13-0. That's going to be our game next week. Hope you guys are around for that. Definitely subscribe if you guys want to keep up with the channel and, you know, keep up with this CFM as we close out this regular season. Leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed what you guys watched. And I will catch you guys next time. Thank you, as always, for watching.